So a couple weeks ago, I was lucky enough to meet and study with guitarist extraordinaire Chris Eldridge, nicknamed Critter. The context was a very cool four-day event called Acousticamp, where the astounding mandolinist Chris Thiele brought together a bunch of his virtuoso musical friends. And there were about 100 fans and 100 musician guests, me being one of them. So I got to see and learn from Critter close up and in a variety of musical formats I'll tell you about in this video. Um, I also discovered that he's just an incredibly generous teacher and a super nice guy. So stick around for more on Chris Eldridge and two killer guitar tips I learned from him. They're gonna help you gain speed and accuracy. Okay, Chris Eldridge, AKA Critter. Without a doubt, one of the great flat pickers and acoustic musicians of our time. He's a giant in the bluegrass world. Studied with Tony Rice. He played with the legendary band, The Seldom Seen. His father was actually a founding member of that band. And he was house guitarist for Chris Thiele's Live From Here radio show for five years. So he's probably best known as the guitarist for the progressive bluegrass band Punch Brothers. Every member of that band is an acknowledged master of their instrument. I mean, you've got the one and only Chris Thiele on mandolin and vocals. You've got Noam Pickelny or Pickles on banjo. You've got Paul Cowart, known as Arco, on bass. And then starting this year, Brittany Haas on fiddle. So the Punch Brothers now have a sister. Anyway, check out this Punch Brothers clip from Acoustic Camp. <laughs> So that's progressive bluegrass, but Critter also loves traditional bluegrass. So a few years ago, he founded another super group. It's a quintet called Mighty Poplar, and Chris is on guitar and vocals. You got Noam Pekelny on banjo again, and then singer, songwriter, mandolin player, guitarist, Andrew Marlin, best known as part of the duo Watch House. Great, great guy, great singer, great songwriter. Mighty Poplar was just a trio at Acoustic Camp, and I got to be a fly on the wall at one of their rehearsals. So in this clip, they're working out a song that I assumed was an Andrew Marlin original called Abigail. But then I talked to Andrew after the rehearsal and he told me that Abigail is actually a cover of a song called Chico River. It's by a California duo called Mapache. Beautiful song. Check out the chorus with Chris and Andrew's parallel harmonies. Now the thing about Critter is he's not only a bluegrass master, he's so versatile that he can just cross genres. I mean, this guy has a duo with Julian Lodge, one of the world's great jazz and improvisational guitarists. They've actually done an EP and two LPs together. I mean, really, Eldridge and Lodge, guitar really doesn't get any better than that. Now, Julian Lodge was also on the faculty at Acoustic Camp, and I got to study with and be mentored by him as well. So that's for future video. Anyway, it's 2023. To date, Critter has already been nominated for eight Grammy Awards. He won a Grammy with Punch Brothers in 2018. And then a year later, the Americana Music Association named him Instrumentalist of the Year. So, you know, the list of things any of us can learn from Chris Eldridge is basically endless. Now, if you want to go deep, Chris has a bluegrass course on artistworks.com. With this curriculum, I tried really hard to demystify a lot of things about how music works. It's got eight levels. I'm not even a bluegrass player, but I'm going to take his course. I mean, I've been playing guitar for many years, and in my first session with Chris at Acoustic Camp, I learned, or I guess you could say was reminded of, two key things about right-hand technique that I know are gonna be as helpful to you as they are to me. Number one, so simple, don't squeeze your pick. So you might think a tight grip is the key to playing fast runs. It's not. <laughs> 
almost the tighter I squeeze, the slower I play. If you want to maintain speed and accuracy, use just enough pressure to keep the pick from flying away, but not enough to tighten the muscles of your arm. I mean, feel what happens when you squeeze. Suddenly your whole arm is engaged, and that means you're going to tire faster and ironically play slower, because most speed is in the wrist, not the arm. All right, number two, pick stroke theory. So this is all about moving consistently in time, keeping up the rhythm even when you're not playing any chords or notes. So with pick stroke theory, numbered beats are generally down strokes and off beats are up strokes. You alternate down ups based on whatever the fastest subdivision of the bar is. And your right hand is always keeping time. So here's how it works with eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Here's sixteenths. One e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a. Get it? So the whole idea is just keep that down up motion going no matter what notes and rhythms you actually want to play. Your hand is always the timekeeper. So by keeping that hand motion going through all the subdivisions of the tempo, your picking rhythm automatically stays more accurate and you automatically use alternate picking for single note runs. So you stop wondering when to go down and when to go up and that alternate picking doubles the number of notes you can play in any given period of time. So once you get used to it, it makes a big difference from breaking up your lead lines with disconnected strokes or plucks. I mean, let me show you the difference. I've got to think of an example. Um, okay, easy one. How about the solo from I've Just Seen a Face by the Beatles? Now, ironically, I think George Harrison played that solo and did it with all down strokes, which is an artistic choice. So the way he does it, there's a lot of start and stop. is using the constant motion of pick stroke theory. It's definitely smoother and more fluid. It sounds more like bluegrass. Okay, so to practice using pick stroke theory, you might want to start with just strumming. Okay, like mute the strings and just strum various rhythms. Uh, try playing eighth notes on beat one and then switch the eighth to beat two and then to three and four like this. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One, two and three, four. One, two and three, four. One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. One, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one. Get the idea. So once you're comfortable with that, then practice picking single notes the same way. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One, two and three, four. One, two and three, four. One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one. See how my hands always just going like that the whole time. It's kind of interesting because I often use both of these techniques just by necessity, and they're almost second nature at this point but Critter made me way more conscious of what I'm doing. And now when I find myself struggling with speed or rhythmic accuracy, I just check my grip and make sure my pick grip isn't too tight. And then I check my right hand to make sure I'm taking advantage of the built-in speed and accuracy of that constant down-up motion in my wrist and hand. All right, so there you go. Two killer tips I learned from Chris Eldridge hope they help you and I hope they inspire you to check out Critter's music, his virtuosity, and his bluegrass guitar course over at artistworks.com. I mean, the guy is one of the best in the world and he's available to be your teacher too. All right, what's next? How about this?